guys, this is Mitz, and today we're going to cover the uh, design and toolpath creation for the Elk 3D model that uh, I have uh, on my channel. I've had a few subscribers ask uh, for a video on the design portion of that model uh, through Carveco Maker, so that's what we're going to do today. So in Carveco Make, Carveco Maker will uh, open up a new model. It will default to the uh, previous project size. Um, my last project was 12 inch wide, 7 and 3 quarter inches high. Um, you can change that to whatever project size you need, but in this case we'll just go ahead and use that. Okay, so here's our model size. We're going to import a uh, 3D STL model. So we'll go to Relief, Import, and Import 3D Model. Scroll down in my file here for the ELK model, and we'll click Open. And it takes a moment for it to load up, but uh, not too bad. Okay. And the next uh, window you'll uh, get uh, some information about the uh, 3D model, its overall size, uh, scale, and um, you can rotate the model or the position of the model on your um, material. So in this case, we're going to change the Y dimension. We know that it's uh, seven inches, uh, seven and three quarter inches tall. So I'm going to make this uh, five and a half inches and we'll click apply. We'll click center, and then that uh, brings the material onto your, uh, it brings the design onto your material. And that's looking pretty good. Um, what I do want to do is I want to move this up so that when we add the border around it, um, I like the uh, antler to go up through the border that we're going to place on here. So let's move that up. Currently it is three and seven eighths so i'll move that up to four and five eighths and we'll click apply okay so that looks pretty good i'm going to hit paste and now that's going to be welded down onto our material i'm going to select this icon here so that we can view it from the top and that gives us a better um, view of things i'm going to now put the border around it so we'll go back up to relief this time I'm going to go to the clip art library where we have uh, different frames. I'm going to choose the leaf frame. Obviously that frame is way too big for our project, so we have to resize it. You can either drag it in from the corners of the sides. Uh, I like to use the scale and size because then I know exactly what the dimensions are going to be. I know that my uh, width of my material is 12 inches, so I'm going to make the overall width 11 um, let's call it 11 inches and the overall height is seven and three quarters so I'm going to make that let's call it seven inches and the Z range is a uh, quarter inch high on that I'd like to lower that to 0 0.20 and we'll click apply all right so there's our uh, frame we just need to center that back over onto our model you can move that manually uh, by just dragging it over or hitting F9 to center it uh, exactly on your model. Okay, so I like the looks of that. Okay, and um, right, I think I'm going to drop the overall height of the elk a little bit. In order to do that, I'm going up here to where it says scale relief. And uh, currently the scale height that it is at 0.44 inches. I'm going to set that at 0.3 inches. And I'm going to hit apply. Um, change that back to cancel. And it should give us a 0.3. And it did. Okay. So now you can see that the antler kind of weaves up underneath the leaves. Uh, on the um, on the uh, border. All right. So in order to get out of that, we have to get out of this window, and now we can select the outer boundary, click Enter, and that fuses it down. 
All right, so now that we've got that done, um, there's one last thing to do before we get into the tool paths. Um, I don't necessarily want to have my finished tool path rastering back and forth over all of this empty area, and um, I'm going to be cutting this out um, as well uh, into that oval shape, so there's no point in having the machine spending the time rastering and, and cutting um, material that you're not going to need anyway. So in order to do that, I go to Vector, Create, and then Create a Relief Boundary, and then Select. Okay. So it creates a boundary around the, the, the whole item. Um, and what I want to do is just select the outer boundary and put an offset on that of about a quarter inch, which is a set at quarter inch, and I want it to go outwards. So we'll do the offset. Okay. All right. So now we're ready to do the um, toolpath. So from toolpaths, go down to the 3D uh, relief toolpath. And what we're going to do is we're going to select this boundary right here, that, that offset. And the area of the machine is going to be inside the selected vector. So inside. And then the finishing options, we're going to select a uh, 1 16th ball mouse, select, and I'm going to use um, speed on here. I'm going to up that to 130 uh, inch per minute. Okay. And then on the um, roughing pass, I'm going to use a quarter inch ball mouse. And the only reason I'm doing that is, is that there's going to be some small pieces around the leaves here. Um, where they point up and uh, an end mill might shear those off. Uh, the ball mills will give it a little bit more of a base and hopefully not shear off. So let's try that. We'll go select. Okay, the ball nose I know is going to, I can run that a, a lot faster. Let's just go 150. And these feed rates that I'm uh, selecting here are, are pretty conservative. Um, you know, they can go, certainly go a little bit faster. I am going to drop the step down just a little bit to 0 0.20, um, only because it's a ball mill. Okay, and then we click to define the material. Uh, the material uh, that I'm using is walnut, and it's 7 eighths of an inch thick, so we're going to go uh, 0.875. And 0.875, okay. And we'll select OK. And now we're going to call this tool path the, um, the relief. And we're going to calculate. And this too takes a minute or so. Okay. We're almost done here. All right. And there we are. All completed. So let's deselect the, um, uh, the light bulb here so that we can see our model. Uh, let's go under tool paths, um, and there's our relief. And we're going to right mouse click on that to, um, you can either do simulate control bar. Um, um, but there's a, another item here, it's called tool path summary. If you, write, uh, if you click on that, it'll tell you that the machine time is going to be two hours and 50 minutes, two hours and 51 minutes. Uh, for the roughing and the finishing. The roughing portion is going to take 36 minutes and the finishing portion is going to take 2 hours and 14. So I just uh, you know, something else to look for here. Um, let's right mouse click. Let's do the simulation control bar. If you double click on simulation, uh, it brings up uh, the rendering window which you can change uh, your material. Uh, I like to use medium oak uh, horizontal. We'll click apply. And now it's going to start uh, the simulation. Tilt that a little bit so you can see a little bit more of the definition. And I'm going to speed this up a little bit so that um, I'm not making a two hour video here. All right, so it's um, using that quarter inch uh, ball nose. And just uh, 
So you see these individual pieces here, they're, they're going to be a little bit smaller by the time this is done. And if I used an end mill, it would actually shear those off. So that's why I chose to use a quarter inch ball nose uh, for uh, the roughing pass. Okay, now we get into the uh, finish pass. And again, this is going to take a while to, to work through, so I'm going to speed through this. Okay, and now you're starting to see some definition on the leaves. Let's speed this up. Look here in just a second. All right, and now we've got uh, starting on the uh, outline of the legs of the elk and another log that it's jumping over. Let's speed that up. Okay, we're getting some good outline on the uh, elk body itself. You can see. Just let this run the rest of the way. Okay, and there's the finished product. You can see that the antler actually climbs up underneath the leaf. Um, I think I had this uh, placed a little bit higher uh, so that the antler actually stood uh, proud of the leaves uh, up there. But again, you can play around with it and uh, do what you, you know what suits you best. Okay, so that takes care of that simulation. Let's delete that, um, and then let's. What I'd like to do is to now cut, do a profile cut around the outside of this. So I'm going to select that uh, vector. I'm going to uh, create another tool path. We're going to do a profile pass. We're going to use a, uh, we want it to go all the way through. We're going to select a quarter inch end mill and hit select. And the end mill, I know is running at, I uh, can easily run at 150. Oops, not 1150, 150. Okay, and everything else, and we'll call this profile. Okay, calculate. Okay, so that's to the outside. I'm not sure it was to the outside, and it is. And we'll close that out, and we'll just do a simulation on that. This will just show the um, total profile cut out. And there you go. All right, so now if we just did the whole thing, uh, we'll just go to simulate all tool paths. Uh, close this up first. And, you know, and there's your piece. All cut out and ready to go. Guys, I hope this helped. Um, if you have any questions, please give me a shout. Thanks. Thank you.